Chapter 47 Christ's Encouragement to Mothers In the days of Christ, mothers brought their children to him that he might lay his hands upon them in blessing. By this act they showed their faith in Jesus and the intense anxiety of their hearts for the present and future welfare of the little ones committed to their care. But the disciples could not see the need of interrupting the Master just for the sake of noticing the children. And as they were sending these mothers away, Jesus rebuked the disciples and commanded the crowd to make way for these faithful mothers with their little children. Said he, Suffer, little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. As the mothers passed along the dusty road and drew near the Savior, he saw the unbidden tear and the quivering lip as they offered a silent prayer in behalf of the children. He heard the words of rebuke from the disciples and promptly countermanded the order. His great heart of love was open to receive the children one after another. He took them in his arms and blessed them. While one little child lay fast asleep, reclining against his bosom. Jesus spoke words of encouragement to the mothers in reference to their work. And oh, what a relief was thus brought to their minds. With what joy they dwelt upon the goodness and mercy of Jesus as they looked back to that memorable occasion. His gracious words had removed the burden from their hearts and inspired them with fresh hope and courage. All sense of weariness was gone. This is an encouraging lesson to mothers for all time. After they have done the best they can do for the good of their children, they may bring them to Jesus. Even the babes in the mother's arms are precious in his sight. And as the mother's heart yearns for the help, she knows she cannot give, the grace she cannot bestow, and she casts herself and children into the merciful arms of Christ. He will receive and bless them. He will give peace, hope, and happiness to mother and children. This is a precious privilege which Jesus has granted to all mothers. Christ, the majesty of heaven, said, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Jesus does not send the children to the rabbis. He does not send them to the Pharisees, for he knows that these men would teach them to reject their best friend. The mothers that brought their children to Jesus did well. Let mothers now lead their children to Christ. Let ministers of the gospel take the little children in their arms and bless them in the name of Jesus. Let words of tenderest love be spoken to the little ones, for Jesus took the lambs of the flock in his arms and blessed them. Let mothers come to Jesus with their perplexities. They will find grace sufficient to aid them in the management of their children. The gates are open for every mother who would lay her burdens at the Savior's feet. He still invites the mothers to lead up their little ones to be blessed by him. Even the babe in its mother's arms may dwell under the shadow of the Almighty through the faith of the praying mother. John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit from his birth. If we live in communion with God, we too may expect the Divine Spirit to mold our little ones even from their earliest moments. 
Christ identified himself with the lowly, the needy, and the afflicted. He took little children in his arms and descended to the level of the young. His large heart of love could comprehend their trials and necessities, and he enjoyed their happiness. His spirit, wearied with the bustle and confusion of the crowded city, tired of association with crafty and hypocritical men, found rest and peace in the society of innocent children. His presence never repulsed them. The majesty of heaven condescended to answer their questions and simplified his important lessons to meet their childish understanding. He planted in their young, expanding minds the seeds of truth that would spring up and produce a plentiful harvest in their riper years. He knew that these children would listen to his counsel and accept him as their redeemer, while those who were worldly wise and hard-hearted would be less likely to follow him and find a place in the kingdom of God. These little ones, by coming to Christ and receiving his advice and benediction, had his image and his gracious words stamped upon their plastic minds never to be effaced. We should learn a lesson from this act of Christ, that the hearts of the young are most susceptible to the teachings of Christianity, easy to influence toward piety and virtue, and strong to retain the impressions received. Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not for of such is the kingdom of heaven. These precious words are to be cherished, not only by every mother, but by every father as well. These words are an encouragement to parents to press their children into his notice, to ask in the name of Christ that the Father may let his blessing rest upon their entire family. Not only are the best beloved to receive particular attention, but also the restless, wayward children who need careful training and tender guidance.